Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today at Ethereal Encounters Unveiled. Today, I'm super excited because our guest is Dick Larson, and I just want to give you a quick overview of who he is and why we're here today. Dick Larson is a counselor with a background in education who addresses the issues of meditation and practical spirituality. He has been a guest on radio talk shows nationwide, co-hosted a radio program, and produced and hosted a series of public access television shows that air around the nation. Dick gives public lectures on the ageless wisdom teachings and their relationship to what is happening in the world today. His message is one of great hope for our future, and I'm so excited to be able to welcome him. Here he is. Thank you so much. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I quickly introduced our guest today, Dick Larson, gave you a quick summary of who he is and why we're here today. But of course, I'm going to let Dick reintroduce himself and kind of explain why we're here today, and we'll take it from there. Thank you, Dick. It's a pleasure having you here today. Thanks for the invitation, Carol Ann. Glad to be here. Yes, my name is Dick Larson. I live in Southern California. I grew up in Minnesota, um, but ended up in Southern California in the Air Force. And then I just fell in love with Southern California and never left. Well, while I was here, um, not real, about 33 or four years ago, a man came to town named Benjamin Krem, and C-R-E-M-E. It looks like cream, but it's cream. He was uh, born in Scotland, lived in London, passed away a few years ago in his 90s. Um, but he used to come once a year, actually twice a year at first, and then once a year to New York and give a lecture, and then L.A. and give a lecture, then San Francisco. And then he would go over to Tokyo and Osaka and give lectures there. He traveled the world for about 40 years giving out the information that we're going to talk about today. Um, it's called the Ageless Wisdom Teachings, which is an ancient, ancient philosophy. It's a living philosophy. It's about life today, and it's continuously updated. The last two teachers of the Ageless Wisdom were a woman named Alice A. Bailey, who wrote about 20 books in the 1920s and 30s, and then Benjamin Krem is the latest revealer of the ageless wisdom, and he's brought it up to date and made it, you know, applicable to our lives right now. And it's about how to live life. Well, Benjamin Krem started a nonprofit educational organization called Share International, S H A R E International, because it's about sharing. And I'm a volunteer. There are about three thousand of us worldwide. And a few of us do interviews like this to help educate the audience on what it was that Benjamin Krem was telling the world. Um, and so that's what I do, and that's why I'm here. And we're going to talk about a very special person and group of people today. That person is the world teacher. His personal name is Maitreya, spelled M-A-I-T-R-E-Y-A, -E Maitreya. It's Sanskrit, and it means the happy one, the one who brings joy. Now, he and his group of senior members of our spiritual kingdom are returning in physical bodies for the first time in 98,000 years to planet Earth to walk amongst us and to teach us. They're teachers. They will make suggestions only. They would never tell us what to do because our free will is sacred. And they will make suggestions, and we can either follow them or not. And so that's basically what it's about. It's about Maitreya and this group called the Masters of Wisdom. They're called masters, not because they're masters over us, but because they're masters over themselves. And I'll explain that as we go along. Okay, that sounds great. Um, I, I want to ask you a question just to get it out of the way. In the, world, in the world we live in today, everyone is worried about we're all spiritual, whether it's through religion or our own spirituality, but we're all worried about cults and cultism. How is this not a cult? Well, a cult is led by someone 
who has the attitude of convincing other people that what they say is true and of in some way or other uh, conquering the world usually, but, but not always. A cult forces, brainwashes and forces its people to do what the leader wants. Well, that, <laughs> that's the last thing Benjamin Krem said. He said, look, this is, you have free will and you don't have to do anything I say or believe. As a matter of fact, he said, please don't believe anything I say. And that's what I want your, your viewers to know, because that would be blind belief. And I can't recommend that to anybody. All I ask your viewers to do is hear what I have to say. I think it's worthwhile or I wouldn't be wasting anybody's time. I think it's very worthwhile. Um, but you have to decide if it's worthwhile for you. Now, maybe 10, 20, 30 percent will make sense to you. If it does, I'll be very, very happy. What I ask you to do is just kind of let it sit in your lap like a brick. Don't fight against it or argue with it or don't believe it. Just let it kind of be there and see if any of it kind of run it through your common sense, through your life experiences and see if any of it makes sense to you. This is not about a religion and it's not about um, something you have to do. We have free will. Well, that sounds fair. So let's get into what are his um, core and fundamental beliefs. Like if I were a newbie just coming to you, yes. where would you start? Well, I would say that about every 2,000 or 2,250 years, planet Earth enters a new cycle, a new era. And so we are sent a great teacher. And history shows that that's true. Now, about 2,250 years ago, we received two, actually. The Buddha came and taught the wisdom of God. And Jesus came and taught the love of God. Those were their messages. Well, it's been 2,000 years. Humanity has grown in awareness and consciousness tremendously, especially in education. And so it's time for the next great teacher with the next great message for humanity. You know, there's an old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Well, humanity must be ready to start incorporating the next teaching. And I can tell you what that is. Maitreya is the teacher's name. He came in a phys he's here in a physical body that he made. He See, the masters are masters over earth sciences. I'll finish that first part first. He's here in a physical body, and his teaching is the will of God. So Buddha taught the wisdom of God. Jesus taught the love of God. Maitreya comes to teach us God's will and the purpose behind that will. So we've been wondering why we're here for eons. <laughs> well, we're finally going to find out why we're here. What's the purpose of our being here? What's the purpose of life on this planet? We're going to find that out. And then we'll have a choice as to how to respond to that. That's the first thing and primary thing that he comes to teach us, who we are and why we're here, and hoping that we will be able to act on that. So he comes, he doesn't come to start a new religion. Um, he says, if you're in a religion and it's working for you, great. If you're not, I come for you too. I come for everybody. He's in a body he made. He can't be destroyed or killed. He doesn't need to eat or sleep. He works 24 hours a day. Um, he can appear. The masters travel by thought. And when I say masters, these are people that we knew like uh, Buddha, Confucius, Krishna, um, Jesus. Um, Joan of Arc is one of the great masters of wisdom now. Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, is one of the great masters. These are the senior members of our spiritual kingdom, and they're called the masters of wisdom. They're called many things. They're called the lords of compassion um, and so on. They are the senior members of our spiritual kingdom, and they have been inspiring humanity behind the scenes for 98,000 years now uh, since they walked on the planet last. They've been inspiring humanity. All the great progress that humanity has made has been inspired by the masters silently behind the scenes. Well, now they're coming forward. 
They're coming forward in physical bodies. Maitreya will be the first to appear to humanity on worldwide television and radio. Um, I think that will happen within the next two years. And so we're not talking about something 100 years off here. We're talking about something very immediate. Um, he's been here now. He's been seen by many, many people who are afraid to say that they saw him because they're afraid they'll get laughed at. Well, I've been laughed at enough that I'm used to it now. So I can go ahead and tell this story. So he's here and he's going to come forward and we can talk more about the rest of his priorities. But that's what I would say, basically, is that I want you to know ahead of time what's going to happen so that you won't be surprised, shocked or discouraged. So Maitreya, tell us about him. Where is he from? Yeah. How did he get started in this? Like, just give us a little background on him. Of course. Thank you for asking. Maitreya, in order to tell the story of Maitreya, I have to tell the story of the masters. I mentioned who they were, some of them. They have gone through evolution ahead of us. Now, two of God's great laws, according to the ageless wisdom, and that'll be my source for this whole interview, uh, pretty much, um, with Alice Bailey and Benjamin Krem. The, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, what was your question? Sorry. Uh, who is Maitreya and how did he get oh, yeah. started? Yeah. So the masters, we know who they are. I, I told you a few of them. They're people who have gone through evolution ahead of us. Two of the great laws uh, of the universe, God's laws, call it whatever you want. I call it God's laws, um, are cause and effect. In the East, they know it as karma. Scientists call it the law of action and reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's been taught in all the world's great religions. Jesus taught it as, as you sow, so shall you reap. It's, it's nothing more than cause and effect. That's one of God's great laws. So we set into, into motion causes by our actions. And then that will come back to us <laughs> as an effect. So if you don't want people to cut you off in traffic, don't cut anybody off in traffic. That's literally how it works. So if you want people to be thoughtful to you or kind to you, be thoughtful and kind to others. You'll get it back. I'm telling you, that's exactly how it works. Sometimes very, very quickly. Um, so that's one of the great laws. The other great law is rebirth, also called reincarnation. Now, we're not talking about coming back as animals. That's a whole different deal. That's the transmigration of souls. I'm not talking about that. Talking about rebirth, that means our soul, which is basically eternal, takes on different bodies. And so when this lifetime is over, my soul, with the advice of the masters, will decide which body I should be born into and which parents and which city in the world to help best accomplish the goals for that next lifetime. Now, the soul remembers where we left off in our spiritual growth, our growth of consciousness. It remembers. And so when it attaches to the fetus, that person comes out, the soul, we pick up right where we left off. So whatever progress we made in a previous lifetime, that's where we'll start for the next lifetime. I mean, it really makes sense. It's a very logical kind of law. And so we've all been every race, we've been every sex, we've been um, grandparents and grandchildren and singles with no, no kids. We've been, we've been all those things. And so after thousands of lifetimes, the soul is able to start finally getting us to wake up and trying to do its will. So the masters have gone through all these lifetimes. They've learned every lesson that planet Earth has to teach us, and they've graduated. They don't need to take bodies anymore. So now they are permanent consciousness, permanent members, senior members of our spiritual kingdom. And so now they're learning the lessons of the spiritual kingdom and they're serving the, the nature of the soul. This is something Benjamin Krem told me that my religion couldn't tell me. I grew up Christian. He said the nature of the soul is to serve. When people start getting in touch with their soul, they look for ways to help people. I, and that's my experience. And I think it's pretty cool. So that's who the masters are now. 
Maitreya and the Buddha were the two first earthlings to graduate, to learn all the lessons that planet Earth has to teach and become members, senior members of our spiritual kingdom. They're brothers. They work together all the time. So Maitreya is the eldest of our spiritual masters. It's called the hierarchy of masters because just like we're all at different rungs on the evolutionary ladder as humans, so are the masters on different rungs of the evolutionary. So it's called a hierarchy of masters. Well, Maitreya is the head of that group. And he's the one, that's why this is such a big deal. He is coming forward for the first time. 98,000 years ago, he, the world teacher didn't come forward, just the masters. Well, he's coming forward as the world teacher for this age, the age of Aquarius. And uh, so he brings this special message and he's going to try to inspire us to take action. Now, not everybody will respond at first, but there will be enough. So who designated Maitreya to be a world teacher? Did he, he did. just, he, he designated himself? Well, God did. Um, because he was the first to graduate, one of the first to graduate, he wanted to be on the teacher path, the path of a teacher. There are, there are seven paths that you can take when you become a master. He chose the teacher's path. A, a Buddha didn't. He chose a different path. And so being the first, being the senior, being the, the, the most advanced of the masters of wisdom, he was chosen, he was asked, of course, free will, he was asked if he wanted to be the world teacher and help humanity for the next 2,000 years, because he'll be walking amongst us for the next 2,000 years. Every time we come back in a new lifetime, he'll be at the center of human activity on, on planet Earth. So he, he became the world teacher in that way. So Buddhas, uh, is this Buddhism or a, a spinoff of Buddhism? Like, where's the correlation? No, not at all. It's no religion. Buddhism has its own teachings. Every religion has its own teachings. They all have a piece of the path, according to the ageless wisdom. And again, I'm not asking you guys to believe every, anything I say. I'm just asking you to kind of just run it through your common sense. Yeah. Every, every religion, there's no one right religion. See, here's what happened. May I talk about the new age for a minute? Of course. Thank you. Here's what happened. For the last 2,000 years, well, let me, let me go back a little bit further. We are surrounded by 12, planet Earth and our solar system are surrounded by 12 great constellations that we call the zodiac. And they're in a certain order. Well, periodically, our planet and the solar system comes into alignment with each of these great constellations one at a time. And when we're in alignment with one of the constellations, it's as if a window is open to receive this tremendously powerful energy from that constellation. And the design is set up that way to help us and our planet and our solar system evolve. For the last 2000 years, we have been in alignment with the constellation Pisces. Now, when we're in alignment with one of these, we say we are in the age of whatever that constellation is. Now, if you were to go to an astronomer at a planetarium, they would tell you that it's called the precession of the equinox, but they know it, they know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a planetary thing. It's a it's a it's an astronomical thing, not an astrological thing. This is not about astrology and newspapers for entertainment. This is this is the real movement of heavenly bodies throughout cosmos. So we've been in alignment with Pisces and receiving Piscean energy for the last two thousand years. The two primary elements of Piscean energy are individuality. Man has come out of the herd in the last 2,000 years and dedication to an ideal. And it was dedication to the ideal of freedom that saved the world in World War I and World War II. 
So Piscean energy has served its purpose. It saved the world, and it made us the individuals, the powerful, decisive individuals that we are now. Here's the trick, though. Everything we have has been built with Piscean energy. All our institutions, healthcare, education, science, government, finance, everything has been built with Piscean energy. And in 1625, the astronomer will tell you this, in 1625, we started moving out of the influence of Pisces and Piscean energy is being withdrawn. So there's nothing these great institutions can do now but collapse. And that's exactly what's happened. The healthcare system isn't working. Government isn't representing the people. That's true. And so on. I mean, the education system doesn't work. We throw all kinds of money at it. Doesn't make any difference. So all of these great institutions are collapsing because the energy that built them is being withdrawn. They're crystallized now. There's nothing in them anymore. There's no body, there's no energetic support for them. But they have served humanity well for the last 2,000 years. And we've developed them well. In 1675, we started moving into the influence of the next constellation that goes backwards from astrology. The next one is Aquarius. So now we're moving into alignment and receiving energies from the great constellation Aquarius. Well, the two primary energies of Aquarius are synthesis and cooperation. So here's the plan of evolution. Those powerful individuals that were built under Pisces are now going to learn to work together in group form as a synthesis to make the world a better place to live. We're moving from a time of competition to a time of cooperation, from a time of you or me to a time of you and me. And these energies are bombarding us well. We're not fully into the age of Aquarius yet. So these energies are crisscrossing the planet right now. And whenever that happens in the transition from one to another, there's chaos on the planet. And that's exactly what we have. now. We have institutions that are crystallized and not working anymore, but they haven't been. We haven't had a chance to fix them with the Aquarian energy of cooperation and synthesis yet. We will. That's my information. Um, but we haven't yet. So we're here in this difficult, difficult time when things are up in the air. The Piscean individuality has caused tremendous separation. I mean, for example, the political parties are as far apart in the U.S. as they could possibly be as they've ever been. And so are institutions and, and so on. Everything is separating now because of the energies of Pisces. How is that part of the plan? Well, I'll tell you. It's part of the plan because it makes the choices more obvious. When there's separation like this, it's much clearer seeing what your choices are. And that's part of the plan, is to make the choices easier to see so that we can choose how we want to go forward. Maitreya and the masters are going to come to educate us to help us decide, because we have free will, we're going to decide how we want to go forward in each of these aspects of life, including family and religion. So when I Googled Maitreya, there were several different images of who this person yeah. is. Who, who is he? Do you have a picture or a book or some type of imagery that we could use? Because folks would want to know who he is and what he looks like. Yeah, well, he's only been seen once. And that was in Kenya. He was seeing, um, there's, a, there's a teacher of, a preacher actually. She's a Christian preacher named Mary Akatsa. And she preaches once a week outside um, Nairobi in the hillsides. And thousands of people, she's also a healer. And there is such a thing as, as healers. Some people think they are and they aren't, but She's a true healer. Thousands of people come to hear her preach and to be healed by her every week. She was told she was going to have a visitor. She said, okay, great. 
She said, a very important visitor. Well, as she was talking, boom, the six foot three dark haired man with a dark mustache and beard appeared right beside her. He was dressed all in white, had a white turban with a turquoise blue band around it, which is exactly how they think Jesus will be dressed when he returns. They're Christians. He appeared beside her out of nowhere. He told her the minute he appeared, the, the people went, Jesus Christus, Jesus Christus. They bend over and bow down to him, recognized him immediately as Jesus the Christ. He told Mary to reach into his pocket, and she said when she looked into the pocket of his robe, there were hundreds of gold crosses in there, <laughs> which, of course, is impossible, but that's what she saw. She picked one out and held it up. It was about this high, about, I don't know, two feet, foot and a half high, and she held it up. And then he spoke to the crowd in perfect, unaccented Swahili for about, I forget what it was, I think 20 minutes. And then he walked into the crowd, and wherever he walked, people were healed immediately. Well, the editor of the Kenyan Times was there. They, they say these things are coincidence. I don't believe it. <laughs> he took pictures of Maitreya alone and Maitreya with Mary Akatsa. And he published, and then, oh, I'll finish the story. After speaking, Maitreya said, I'm, I'm going to leave now. And a doctor that was there said, can I give you a ride? And he said, sure. So the doctor said he got in the car. They drove about a mile down the road. And Maitreya said, this is fine. I can get out here. And the doctor said, but there's nothing here. And he said, it's OK. And the doctor said he got out of the car, took about five steps, and disappeared into thin air. That's the story of Maitreya. Well, the, Ken the, um, the Kenyan newspaper the next day had a big picture of Maitreya and the crowd. And the headline said, did Jesus appear in Nairobi? And so that was the Kenyan Times. Now, that's a, those are photos. Benjamin Krem said that's not exactly what he's going to look like when he comes forward in his real body. Um, but that's, that's the most accurate appearance of him. So if you were to Google Maitreya in Nairobi or Maitreya in the Kenyan Times, then you would see that image. Okay. He took, I don't know, three or four pictures of Maitreya at the time. And one, you can see Mary holding up the, the cross. He had a whisk in, in his hand because that's part of what the Catholics there believe Jesus would come with a whisk in his hand. Um, and so that's, that's the appearance that, that would probably be the most accurate. Now, he's been appearing, and other masters have been appearing to people worldwide out of thin air, but as others. They, they don't appear as themselves. See, the masters are, are masters over the energy of the planet. They're not subject to gravity and all that other stuff that we are. And they can just create out of thin air, like Sai Baba makes the, the booty out of thin air in his hand, um, or used to, um, out of nothing, or even make a gold watch, you know. Um, just out of thin air. Well, the masters can do the same thing because they, they are master scientists. And so um, the masters can make any body they want and they can appear. Now, the masters can appear in like 30 places at once mm -hmm. in, in whatever way they want to look. Um, and they've done it many times. They travel by thought. The masters travel by thought. Isn't that interesting? Um, and they communicate by telepathy. They don't need to speak openly to each other. So they will appear. They've been appearing to people as a child, as an older person, as many times as a homeless person, um, African-American, Asian-American, Caucasian, and so on. Um, they've been appearing to people. And if people think they had an experience of one of the masters, they will write a letter to Share International. And when Benjamin Crumb was alive, if he would, he was in contact with one of the masters. He was trained over years how to be, communicate telepathically with one of the masters. And so he would ask his master, is this a true story of a master? And if so, which master? And then if it was true, he would publish that letter 
in Share International Magazine, which is published once a month um, with news about Maitreya and the masters and good news from around the world uh, with no advertising. Benjamin Crumb didn't want to be in debt to anybody. So there was no advertising. It's supported by donations and subscriptions. And there'd be the letter published right there of the experience. And at the end, Benjamin Cram would write, Benjamin Cram's master confirmed that the lady was the master Jesus or whatever was Maitreya. Whatever. Usually Jesus or Maitreya, they work together all the time. They're best buddies. Okay. Because um, we hear a lot about the Antichrist and how deceptive he's going to be when, when and if he, he returns and I'm, you know, Jesus is my Lord and savior. And, and I believe in the Bible and the Bible warns us about false prophets. And how do we yes. know, how do we know that this Maitreya or these teachers are not false prophets? Like, yeah. what would you say to someone if they posed that question to you? Well, I've been asked that question many times. Um, and it's a great one. And one of concern to many people, especially um, Christians. I need to explain the Antichrist, according to the Ageless Wisdom. The Antichrist is an energy, not a person. But it's an energy who can that can work through a person. 2,000 years ago, if you look, I used to teach Bible study. If you look at any good study Bible and the book of Revelations, where it talks about the beast 666, there'll be footnotes. And the footnotes, I have three different study Bibles that all the footnotes say the same thing. Um, they say that in those days, numerology was very big. Each letter represented a number. And 666, is the total of the numbers in the name Caesar Nero. Nero was the beast 666. And as you know, I mean, this great, great Roman Empire, he single-handedly destroyed it. Um, he uh, persecuted thousands of Christians terribly. He was a horrible, evil, evil man. And he was the beast 666. Now, the the Antichrist energy comes with a purpose. It comes to break down the old order and pave the way for the new. While through Nero, it broke down the Roman Empire and paved the way for Christendom. 2,000 years later, the Antichrist energy was again released through a person, actually through about five people, but I'll focus on one because you know who it is if you think about it. It was released through Hitler. It was released through Hitler and Mussolini and a couple of the Japanese generals. But Hitler was the main Antichrist force for that time. He tried to conquer the world. He did everything the Bible says the Antichrist will do. He was incredibly evil. He killed millions and millions of people. Um, he tried to conquer the world. And he fooled people for decades starting at the end of World War I, to thinking he was going to lead them into this perfect world, this perfect Aryan society. Um, he, he did it all. And he was defeated by the Allied powers with the help of the masters because both Germany and the Allies had, were about the same stage of development of the atom bomb. And the masters made sure that the Allies developed the atom bomb first. Now, the thought was the masters, you know, don't like to fight. <laughs> they, they're they not pacifists, but they're realists. They thought that just announcing that we have the bomb would end the war. Germany would go, okay, 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 we give up. They didn't. We had to actually use it. They didn't think we would. But again, the bomb saved the, bomb, saved the world. Um, and it's nothing compared to the nuclear warheads we have now, which are hydrogen, not atomic. Um, I mean, it's a drop in the bucket compared to what one of them would be now. So anyway, he was, he was the Antichrist for our time. The Antichrist has been defeated. It's come and gone. The Ageless Wisdom says the Antichrist will appear one more time in about 2,500 years 
And that battle will be fought on the mental levels, not the physical levels. And then it will be done with its job. It will, it will um, have paved the way for the new world coming after that. And it will be retired forever on planet Earth. So that's the Antichrist. <clears throat> so the Antichrist for our time, the good news is it's come and gone, according to the ageless wisdom. And it that's makes sense. To me. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense to me. Now, the term Christ, it's important that I explain this. Maitreya is, I know this is going to rub you wrong. It rubs all Christians wrong. Just hang with it for a minute. Maitreya is the Christ for planet Earth. What makes a person the Christ? I will tell you. The Christ can embody actually in himself, hold it in himself, the love of God. He, there are very few Christs in our solar system. He is, he is one. It's a very, very special, special um, advancement for a disciple to make, for a master to make. And every, everyone thinks that Jesus was the Christ, and for three years he was. And I'll tell you how that works. <clears throat> the age-old way for a master to give out his teachings is through one of his great, great advanced disciples. First example, Buddha. Buddha wanted to give out his teachings, and before he was born, as a soul, Prince Gautama agreed to let the Buddha work through him, which is a great sacrifice, because Prince Gautama could have given out great teachings on his own. But he said, no, I will let the Buddha's consciousness enter me and give out his teachings. He did that and became known as Gautama Buddha. But he wasn't the Buddha. He gave out the Buddha's teachings, but he was Prince Gautama. Same thing with Jesus. Before he was born, he was so evolved and such a good disciple that he agreed with Maitreya to give out the teachings of the Christ, now, which, again, was a tremendous sacrifice for him because he could have given out fabulous teachings. Um, but he agreed, and what happened was from the time of the baptism to the time of his crucifixion, he was overshadowed by Maitreya, just like Prince Gautama was by the Buddha, so that Maitreya's consciousness was in him. Sometimes it was there with Jesus' consciousness. Sometimes it was there by itself. And so Jesus gave out the teachings of the Christ and became known as Jesus Christ. Jesus had one more lifetime. He was um, in, in India. Uh, I'll think of it in a minute, and you can look it up in history. He was a great, great teacher. And then that was it. He had learned all the lessons of planet Earth, became a master. He and Maitreya worked, worked together all the time. Here's the thing. The masters have no egos. <laughs> so they're not jealous of each other at all. They just, they're just love and wisdom. That's what they are. Jesus and Maitreya are best buddies. Now, my information is that before the age of Aquarius is over, there will be over 40 masters walking amongst us. There are 63 in our um, spiritual kingdom. Over 40 of them will be walking amongst us. Right now, there are 14 masters in physical bodies on the planet. Maitreya is in the outskirts of London, and he works with a group there. They know who he is. Um, a few of them know who he is. But he hasn't declared it to the world yet because he doesn't want to infringe our free will. We have to ask him who he is, and I'll tell you how that will happen. He's there. There's a mosque, there's a master in Tokyo, there's a master in Darjeeling, there's a master in um, Geneva, there's a master in the in the um, in the mountains out here in Southern California, there's a master in New York and around the world. There's a master in Rome. The master in Rome is the Master Jesus. He's back. He's not here for the end of the world. The, the book of Revelations is the hardest book to understand of all the books in the Bible. And it's basically divided into three sections. And the first section is about Nero and his persecution. The middle section is about what's going on right now and about Maitreya coming and Jesus returning. And then the third section is about the end of the world. Um, this is not the end of the world. The planet Earth has millions of years left. So, 
Jesus is in out, the outskirts of Rome. The Pope and a couple of cardinals around him know he's here, but they've been asked not to say anything because if the Pope said Jesus is here, most Roman Catholics would believe it instantly, and that would infringe on their free will. We have to recognize them. So Jesus is here, and as I understand it from the Ageless Wisdom, Jesus' job will be to get the Christian church back on track because it's lost a lot of its original teachings and purposes. It's been filled with man-made dogma, man-made laws and rules. And he's going to clean all that out. I mean, he's going to travel the world and talk in, in most countries of the world and answer questions. And then people will be able to ask him, did you really say this? What did you mean when you said this? Um, you know, and things like that. I mean, it, <laughs> this is a great time to be alive. I'm telling you, he will be the first master to come forward after Maitreya, we will eventually see Jesus and Maitreya standing side by side on television. Maitreya will say something like, this is my beloved brother, Jesus. Jesus will say, this is my beloved brother and friend, the, the world teacher, Maitreya. Um, they work together all the time uh, because Maitreya worked through Jesus. I mean, what a tremendous sacrifice for Jesus. So Jesus will be the head of the Christian church. There'll be no more popes. He will take his rightful place on St. Peter's throne, throne at the head of the Christian church for I don't know how many hundred years um, and will get it back on track. All the world's major religions have lost their way. And there will be a teacher in every one of the world's major religions to help get the te original teaching back on track. The Bible will be a sacred book and a meaningful book for hundreds of years. And I'll tell you why, because they're going to teach us the symbolism in the Bible. We see pretty much the straight on literal stuff, um, but there's tremendous symbolism behind it that's very, very meaningful. I'll give you one example. Jesus foretold the time he was going to return in the Bible. Here's how it happened. He sent his disciples into town and he said, look for a man carrying a pot of water. Inquire within, rent the upper room, that's where we'll have our dinner, which was the Last Supper. Well, the disciples did. They went into town, they saw a man carrying water. Well, it's very unusual for a man to carry water in those days because women carried the water. The only men that carried water worked for a hotel. They saw the man carrying the water, inquired within, rented the upper room. The symbol for Aquarius is a man carrying a pot of water. Jesus, the symbolism there is that Jesus was giving us a hint when he would return. He would return in the age of Aquarius, which is now. He is here now in a physical body. Nobody's taken pictures of him. He's waiting. He's not going to come forward first. Maitreya's job is to come forward first. When will he come forward? It'll be when he, whenever all the energies are right. But he said, basically, if I can, I'm going to wait until the stock market collapses, because it will. Not because the masters will make it collapse. We will through our greed. And not you and I, but the wealthy people that yeah. own most of the world. Yeah. Through their greed, the stock market will collapse, literally. Well, we're, we're, going, is God right now. we're going, obviously, through some turbulent times. And, yes. and a lot of people globally but especially in the united states are re rebaptizing themselves they're finding jesus it's happening in colleges it's happening all over the country and the globe but um what do you think accounts for that is it because we're in such turbulent times and yes. troublesome times that people are rediscovering their spirituality uh is this the powers of the the teacher, like, what do you think accounts for that? Um, I think there's two things going on. I think ever, absolutely what you said is going on. And also what's going on is people are leaving the churches. They're leaving the churches because the church's teachings are ancient and don't answer their questions about modern life very well. On the other hand, what you said is absolutely true. We are being bombarded by Maitreya and the masters with this tremendous, and by Aquarius, with these tremendous spiritual energies to awaken our souls. What's happened, here's what happens when the 
Earth is in the situation that we're in, any planet. Let me say this. The, the Ageless Wisdom says that each planet has seven rounds of life, and each round is millions of years. Earth is in the middle of the fourth round. Where it's in the middle of the fourth round that the people on the planet wake up and they start to realize who they really are. They're not humans having spiritual experiences. They're a spirit having a human experience, which is very, very important. We're living souls. And so that's what's happening. People are waking up to their souls. People are waking up to who they are. And Maitreya comes to remind us who we are. He says that's one of the main things is you've forgotten who you are. So people are waking up to their soul now and they're looking for guidance. And of course, the church is one of the first places to go. If you've never been involved in a church, that the church will hold great meaning for many people. And so I think there's two things going on. People that have been in the church forever are getting frustrated and leaving a lot of them, not all. And people who are awakening to their soul are looking for guidance and the church is one of the most obvious places to get spiritual guidance. So there's a lot going on now. Yeah, there really is. And I think a lot of it is because of the trauma. You know, when people discover who they are and there's all this trauma going on, they want to seek that path. I run into people all the time who say, I'm a searcher. I'm a seeker. I'm looking for some kind of spiritual guidance, some kind of path to take um, to rise above all the chaos that's going on in my life right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's interesting. Thank you. It's interesting because it's almost intuitive. Like, I think people are leaving the old dogmatic ways of the church and they're yeah. rediscovering this new church that still includes Jesus and the beliefs of, of Jesus, but yes. in, in a very different way. I mean, a lot of people are turning away from the Pope. They don't like a lot of what he's saying in the Catholic church, his politics. I mean, we won't get into that, but... I think it's all leading towards this cosmic consciousness of, totally. of people that they're just awakening. So you're saying that um, Maitreya is like kind of guiding us towards this. Is that correct? Yes. And Jesus and so many of the other masters. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with what you just said, Carol Ann, about consciousness. Humanity is waking up. We're starting to become more and more conscious mm. of life, of, about the people around us, the Absolutely. needs of people around us. Absolutely. See, the way to serve God is to serve others. Right. You know, that, that's that's it. God doesn't want to be praised. That's one of the things Jesus will tell the church, I'm sure, is that God's not interested in being praised. He's interested in us putting into action the teachings. The teachings are great, but without action, they're nothing. You know, Martin Luther started that whole thing with yeah. it's not just faith, it's actions. Absolutely. Um, and and so that's what they want. Maitreya says, I don't want you to believe in me. I want you to try out my suggestions, act on them and see what happens. Here's the thing about Maitreya. The other answer to your question about Maitreya is he the Antichrist is the tree is known by its fruit. And so here's what's going to happen when Maitreya comes forward publicly on that. He calls it my day of declaration. It will be the day I declare I am here and who I am to the world. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, Benjamin Krem's master said that about a third of the people that hear him will say, you know what? This guy's got some good ideas. I want to I want to help. I want to try him. About a third of the people will say, nah, I'm going to take a wait and see attitude. I don't know. The people that take the wait and see attitude are going to see he does nothing evil. He doesn't hurt anybody or anything. He doesn't try to conquer anything. He said, I don't want to lead you. I just want to teach you. Um, and then you can take whatever you want from it. Um, and they'll see that that what he does says works. The suggestions he makes work out. And people will slowly but surely come over. The other third will go Antichrist, Antichrist, look out and won't won't want to have anything to do with him. But that third that will be willing to take action on his suggestions right from the start, Carol Ann, is more than the critical mass needed to start turning this planet around. He comes to help us recreate life on this planet according to God's will, to recreate, to create literally heaven on earth. And now that's going to take 
thousands of years, but we're going to start. See, we're here. I'm the way what the Aegis Wisdom says is that souls are sent into the world when they're needed, usually in groups. Mm. Well, the group of my parents were here to end World War II, to defeat Hitler and okay. and the and the Axis powers. And they did their job. Women left home and went to work in factories. I mean, <clears throat> men went to war knowing full well they were probably going to die. They couldn't wait to go to war. That was the right generation for the right time. Well, right. We're here now. And I think we're here for a couple of reasons. Number one, because we can handle the chaos without going crazy, most of us. We can handle it and not lose sight of our priorities. And number two, because we can be counted on to start moving this planet in the right direction, start cooperation instead of competition, start taking care of each other better um, in, in whatever way that evolves into. Um, I think we're being counted on. It's a great thrill for me, anyway, to be here at this moment. This is a great moment in human history. I, I mean, agree. This, this, I agree. This will never be repeated. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. On the flip side, um, yeah. I think there's a very strong and present evilness that's that's taking place globally as well. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people behind the scenes that um, hate mankind, to put it bluntly, and they want to do away with us. I mean, if if you look at like the Georgia Guidestones, the first declaration was to reduce the population to. 500,000 people globally. Now, I believe that if you look at what's been happening, especially the past decade, and even especially more the past four years, it looks very nefarious to me uh, what they're doing to our food, our water. Um, there's a lot of three letter organizations out there that are up to no good. But these people that are enlightened or, or working towards um, enlightenment or or creating a higher dimensional level, like I pray to do that every day to leave the th 3D and enter 4 and 5D. Um, you. Thank you. Um, it, it comes, it's almost like a rebirth and birth is very painful. So my point is this, we're all going through this pain of rebirth. Yeah. Is, well, go ahead. Is the world teacher going to uh, and make that easier on us somehow? Like, where are the teachings going to appear so that we can make the best of them and, and start to transition to world goodness, world peace? Yeah. They will appear on media and on the internet. How, though? Um, pardon? How? How will they appear? Like, through this one know. verse? You don't know. Okay. I don't know. My Maitreya will give out his teachings, I can tell you. Well, let me first go back to what you said about evil being stronger now, because I agree 100%. Mm. Here's, what, here's what the teaching is from the Ageless Wisdom. The teaching is that at times like this, when the masters are about to come forward for the first time in 98,000 years, and Maitreya, the world teacher, is here to completely help us turn this world around if we follow his suggestions, the dark forces are real. There's no Satan, there's no devil, but there are dark forces. And the dark forces are making their last great stand because they know when Maitreya and the masters come forward, it's all over for them. That won't happen instantly, but it will be basically over. They know this. They're, they're wise, these dark forces. That's how they latched onto Hitler and Mussolini. They knew, they knew that these were very powerful people. And so they are fighting for tooth and nail for their life right now. They're pulling every dirty trick they can think of. They're influencing every human being they can possibly get their hooks into to try and resist the spirituality and the consciousness that is entering our planet right now, entering you and I, and inspiring us yes. to move forward with greater consciousness and more spirituality in our lives. In other words, to respond more to our souls. And, and so the dark forces are fighting a fierce battle. There were times when Benjamin Cram was giving a lecture and he said, I can't contact my master right now 
because he's busy fighting the dark forces. The masters are having a great battle that we don't even know about right now. It would, that literally has been going on. And so I agree with you 100%. The, the evil in the world is coming to the surface. Now, the good thing about that, for example, I, I well, I'll just use it anyway. You're not going to like this, but I'll use it anyway. For example, the, the priests in the church that were molesting kids, it came to the surface. It made the church look awful, but in fact, it was good that that came to the surface because then it could get cleaned out. You see, the bad news can't get cleaned out until it comes to the surface. Oh, absolutely. We recognize it, we see it, and we can act on it. Absolutely. So what it looks like is terrible, terrible, terrible. What's really happening is we're waking up to things that need to be changed. And that's how it works. So, so don't be deceived by how bad things look. Because according to my train, the masters, there, I mean, things are going to be so incredible in the future. Um, we're going to be, education will be totally different. It will be based on the fact that we are living souls. It won't be based on reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, that'll be part of it, of course. But the primary focus will be on the fact that we're a soul and how can we respond to our soul and live a good life. That's what education will be based on. And there'll be masters helping in education because the masters know, they see our light and they know how evolved each of us is. We're all in different places sure. and they'll be able to tell us. They'll probably have a, a very high disciple that, that they'll be talking to who will take each child and say, okay, here's where you're at. Here's what you need to know for now. Here's what your next step needs to be. Focus on that. They'll do that with the children and with the adults, knowing where we're each at. And it would be very private, very personal. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, whew, there's going to be silent, motionless transportation. We will, ben, Benjamin Krem said, we will arrive as refreshed as when we started. There will be, the cities will become smaller and have way more parks and greenery. Um, the cities are too big. The population will go from 8 billion to about four and a half. That's what the planet is set up to handle. How will that happen? It will happen through education, through, through, through. So here's the thing about po population. When people are scrambling for firewood and food just to survive that day and to feed their family for that day, they can't think about spirituality. Absolutely. They, that's that's just it's, that's it's just Maslow's no Maslow's hierarchy. I mean exactly Maslow's hierarchy. So Maitreya's first five priorities are food for everybody, housing for everybody, education for everybody, along the line of our interests. Right. And healthcare, food, housing, and education. Those are his first four priorities. Well, that's Maslow's bottom level of hierarchy. Once everybody has what they need, not what they want. But what they need, then we can start focusing on the spiritual aspects of life. The other, the fifth priority of his will be the, the um, nature, pollution, the welfare of our planet. Because if this planet dies, it's all over. All life. I mean, on the Dick, I, there's, there's a few principles that I struggle with. Okay. One of them is if God created our souls and our beings and birthed us he right now there's over eight billion people on the planet and right. i believe that's through god's intention that every soul is unique and special and different and god created us beings each and every one of us so if the population is too big and it's supposed to be smaller why did god create each and every soul then I, I, like what I'm trying to say is I think we're all supposed to be here. Like right. I, I just believe that the earth is, is massive and that if we do care for the planet and are considerate to it, that it can house us all because if, if, if we're born, that was God's intention. So I struggle with that population yeah. thing a little bit. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, like I said, the age of wisdom says the planet is really set up 
to serve in great abundance four and a half, four to four and a half billion people, billion people. Um, but when a baby, when a fetus is created, God has to attach a soul to that fetus. Correct. Now, I said we come into incarnation, we come into life on the planet in groups. And each group comes when it's supposed to come. So there are all these, there's millions and millions and millions and millions and billions of souls in our spiritual kingdom that aren't in a body right now. But when their time comes, we'll take a body. The problem with overpopulation is that souls are rushed into service before they're supposed to be. I hmm. Okay. So they're here before they're really supposed to be here. But now, who, who said that? Like, how do we know they're here? But why are they here before they're supposed to be here? If it's God's plan. Because we make too many babies. But if it's God's plan and that person is born and has a soul and a spirit and a connection to God, isn't that the way God intended it? Like, I'm, well, I, I, they, I struggle with that. Well, they totally have to be respected and cared for and 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 so on because they are a living soul. Right. Absolutely. But that wasn't God's design to have this many people at once. Oh, no, God's I struggle with that. Is, pardon? I struggle with that. I, yeah, I, I, I'm I just see, saying. I can see where you would. I'm but, just saying see, personally, I, I have a struggle with that. Souls aren't supposed to come in until it's their time, but that's not happening now because there's too many babies. So souls are being rushed in before they're really allowed to serve as they're supposed to serve. So it's an injustice to those souls, mm. but they have to take a body. They know that. Mm. So it's really an injustice to them that they're not getting to fulfill their primary purpose because they have to connect to this baby right now. Gotcha. Whereas if, if it's, see, I think the souls are in groups of like, Four billion, mm. and so I think those groups are designed to fill the bodies of four billion people at a time, and then some from this group over here that aren't supposed to come in for another 150 years, all of a sudden they're rushed into service because there's too many. So I think that's the plan, and that's really all I know about it. And that's all yeah. I can tell you. No, it's a tough. It's a. I've spoken to other people about it. It's it's yeah. it's challenging, and and I hope that. This all becomes clear to us, you know, with with continued spirituality growth and teaching. Here's the thing. We have free will. We can maybe make a baby if we want to. Sometimes we make accidental babies. But right. we have free will. And God and the masters will never, ever force us to do anything. Why? Why is free will sacred? I'll tell you. Free will is sacred because one of the best ways we learn, and our job is to learn, learn and grow. Learn and grow, learn and grow. One of the best ways we learn is from making a choice. Mm. We can make a wise choice. We can make a poor choice. The goal, we're human. The goal isn't to make the right choice every time. The goal is to learn from the choice that we made. That's where we fail, when we don't learn and keep making the same mistakes over and over and over, we don't learn them. That was what Maitreya, uh, Maitreya and the Buddha did so well. They learn, Every time they made a choice, they learned from it and advanced. Absolutely. Make a choice, advance. Make a choice, advance. They didn't make mistakes three or four times or 3,000 times. <laughs> you know, and that's our goal. Our goal, our, our free will is to allow us to learn and grow. Right. And so that's why we have free will and it'll never be, never be infringed by the masters. Yeah, I love that. Um, I know we went over our hour. I apologize. Um, maybe we oh, can, maybe we could do a part two someday. That would be very interesting. I'd like to continue. But in closing, what would you like to share with our listeners about the world teacher, about your participation? You said you were chosen to represent and 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 speak on this topic. Just give us your closing thoughts. Sure. I wasn't chosen, actually. I just volunteered. <laughs> well, you were kind of chosen. <laughs> I know, but but thank you. <laughs> um, well, really, it's not about me. I'm just an ordinary person trying to give out this information so people will have an idea what, when it happens, what will happen. Because Maitreya is going to appear on worldwide television and radio. He's going to address the entire world. Anybody over the age of 14 
will hear his words in their head telepathically. So men working in the fields, women working over here, will hear his words in their head. He is going to, nobody knows exactly when or how long he's going to talk. I'm guessing 35, 45 minutes, but I don't know. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to give us a vision of the past. We'll actually see it in our mind's eye. Benjamin Krem was given this experience. He said, it's phenomenal. It's like you're in this big sphere and you see the world happening. You can hear the sounds. You can smell the spells. You can see it. We're going to get an experience of the past and show where we lost our way. Then he's going to give us an experience of this brilliant future that's in store for us if we choose wisely. And he will do that to inspire us to take action, take right action. It will be a very personal experience for each of us, very individual. He'll speak telepathically in whatever your native language is. He'll speak to the whole world. After he's done speaking, there will be press reports. There are three ways you'll know it's him. After he's done speaking, there will be press reports from around the world that hundreds of thousands of people were miraculously healed while he was speaking. The second way you'll know it's him is that You'll see his face on TV, but his lips won't move. You'll see his face on your cell phone, but his lips won't move. You'll still be hearing him, though. You'll be going, he's not talking, but I'm hearing him. It'll be a very unusual experience tele telepathically. The third way you'll know it's him is that while he's speaking, he will send out the love of God to this planet and to each of us so powerfully that he said it will be as if I embrace you physically. That, I mean, you will feel the love of God in your heart like you've never felt it before. Trust the love of God in your heart. The Antichrist can't do that. And in those three ways, you'll know that this is the world teacher for our age. He'll be with us for the next 2,000 years, and you can either follow his suggestions or not. It's your choice. And then we all have our little choices to make. But that's how he will introduce himself to humanity. Then he will travel around the world, as will Jesus, around the world and give talks and answer questions and basically introduce the other masters as they come into the world. Some of them will be people you know as St. John, uh, Paul. Um, Mary will be the first female master. That's in about 250 years. And that's because this is the age of Tara. Our planet is saturated with female energy. And so the masters are coming in physical bodies right now to balance that out. And once it's balanced in about 250 years, then the first female master, Mary, will come and so on. So I don't know if Joan of, Arc will, Joan of Arc will be one of the 40 masters or not. But that's what will happen. That's what you can look forward to. I'm telling you, it's a great time to be alive. You can go to the, the website, share, S-H-A-R-E hyphen international dot org, not dot com, S-H-A-R-E dash international all spelled out dot org for more information or you can go share international dot us for the us website there are many share international websites i'll uh, make sure i i'll make sure i run them across the screen for folks oh great and i'll Thank put them in the, sure of course and i'll put them in the description of the video as well so folks if you want the links i will make sure they're in the description of this video Thank you. So well, yeah, go right ahead. We're, we're fortunate to be here. This is a blessing. You're going to see changes in this world, positive changes within the next few years. For example, Benjamin Krem said that within two years of Maitreya coming forward, forward there'll be no more starvation on the planet. Wow. The problem is distribution. We have a 13% surplus of food that is not getting distributed. Right. The plans are out there. Once Maitreya comes forward, starvation will end. And then we'll go from there. <clears throat> I it's mean, we have we have to stop these crazy wars first. <laughs> these wars will, and <laughs> yeah, see that will happen because these powerful dictators were built under Piscean energy, and Piscean energy is being withdrawn. They don't know it, but their time is over. <laughs> yeah. And and what's going to happen is the UN will become a powerful world force, not a government, not a world government. Every nation is sacred. The, the, every nation has a personality and it contributes to the whole. But the yeah. United Nations, the masters aren't pacifists, like I said. When a dictator pops up, the UN will go in and knock him out. And that's how it's going to happen. Yeah, and, well, we'll and, see. Yeah, well, it won't happen overnight. Right. You know, but, but when you come back in your next lifetime and I come back in mine, 
you know, we'll see Maitreya at the head of the center of the world and we'll make decisions then about what we want to do too. So Absolutely. this will be ongoing, but right now we're here to get it started. Thank you so much that. for this interview. Oh, thank you. Stick around. Uh, I'd like to talk to you off, off camera for, for a second, if you don't mind, but Dick, thank you so much. I found this to be very enlightening. And if our listeners have any questions, can they email you or do you just want them to leave them in the comments and maybe you can pop back in and answer some of the questions? Would that work? The comments would work great. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much, Dick. And we'll be in touch again.